Hey y'all, it's Kelly from Dixie Airlines Tumblers, and today I'm starting with a sanded and spray painted 20 ounce skinny straight from Craft Haven. Y'all know if I wanna put vinyl on something, I'm usually gonna go with the 20 ounce skinny straight or the 30 ounce skinny straight. So I've actually just set my cup down on a sheet of paper and I've outlined the cup on the piece of paper. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a split design today. So this is the easiest way that I know how to do it, where I get a true 50-50 split on the cup. So I'm just gonna trace it out on my paper and then I'm cutting my circle out here and then I'm gonna fold this circle in half. And then after I've got my paper circle folded in half, I'm gonna put it on the bottom of my cup and I'm gonna make marks at the top and the bottom. So this is gonna give me a true 50-50 split. And make sure you make your marks up on the sides so when you're standing the cup up on the table, you're able to see those little marks. So make sure they come around on the sides. So this is just a leveling ruler and it stands straight up and down so I can just place it right where the mark is on the bottom that I just made and then make a little mark at the top also. And then I'm gonna spin the cup around and I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. So you can see it's giving me a very straight line here. And then that's where I, I'm gonna use those as my guides to lay my tape down. So I'm gonna take my painter's tape here and you can see my mark at the top and my mark at the bottom. I'm just gonna place my tape right along those little marks right there. So it's gonna give me a straight line up and down on the cup. And then I'm just gonna, I take the same piece of tape, wrap it around the bottom and then come up on the other side. So you can see it gives me a true 50 split on the cup. And after I get my tape firmly pressed down, I'm gonna go in and lay my vinyl on the one half of the cup. And this is a, a vinyl pattern that I got from the Vinyl Cottage. It's called Beach Please 10. So I will link it in the description box below, but I've cut it fairly close to the size that I'm gonna need for the cup, but I'm only gonna do half of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim off that one little piece, lay it on the cup, and then press my vinyl down on just the one half. And I've got my tape here where you guys see me lay down tape a lot of times. So I have a little bit of overlap. This time I'm just gonna do a little overlap here, press it down on the other half till I get to the other tape, and then I'm gonna trim off the excess there. And y'all, this is a design that Jessica Flynn did, this split cup, and so I'm kind of, it was a design that I copied from her. <laughs> she came out with this split cup and I thought it was such a fun idea and a fun way to use vinyl and use a little bit of glitter too. So I did this cup probably, I don't know, maybe a year and a half ago or so, but I kept getting asked about tutorials on it. So I'm finally here to give you one on this one. So you can see I'm just pressing the tape down here firmly and I'm gonna trim off the excess on both sides. Uh, this one, I'm just gonna peel off this. I'm gonna go on the other side and make sure that I've got it pressed down and trim off the excess. Then I'll go into the top and then I'm gonna pull that vinyl on the bottom around to the bottom and just trim off a little bit this kind of inside that little seam that you get in the bottom. And I do go ahead and take off this tape. I'm gonna reuse it. I'm gonna take that same piece of tape and put it over the vinyl so I can kind of protect that as I'm glittering. But I did go ahead and remove that tape and I'm just gonna trim off the top, trim off the bottom, and then I'm gonna go into laying my decal down. So in the meantime, I've gone in and printed out this pineapple and I wanted this so it had open places in the center that I could glitter, but this is gonna be kind of my guide that I'm gonna use. And I printed this pineapple off in a five inch height. I'll list all this below. I will go ahead and tell you while you're doing this and you're printing your guide, go ahead and print what you're gonna use as your top layer. Y'all have made this mistake before, so go ahead and print off your gold version and the one you're gonna use as your base layer. So y'all, this is the coolest little tool right here. It's, a, it's made by Fiskars and it's called a vinyl decal alignment tool. And I actually found this from Susanna Renaud's. <laughs> and I was like, she always has the coolest little tools. Let me see how this thing works. So I ordered it on Amazon and it really is great. So I'm actually taking my same half circle here and I'm lining up where my vinyl is and I'm making a little mark so I can see where the center of the cup is. And then this has these little feet that you just press up against the cup. It holds it straight. <clears throat> And then you can see this has got like a little crossbar on it. So you can line your transfer tape up. You can see I'm lining the transfer tape up here. Then you're gonna get it where, you know, kind of what you want it. And this little arm goes up and down. So you can also center it up and down. And then you also have the straight line from this crossbar. I thought this was the coolest little tool, y'all. So then you pull your backing off of your transfer tape. <clears throat> and you place this, you can kind of see I've got part of it underneath the arm and part of it on top of the arm there. So you use that same crossbar, you find where your center is and then you can press that down and then you pull out the little arms and pull out the tool and you can press your decal down. I thought this was the coolest little thing y'all and it actually works great. Especially for somebody that me like that I hate measuring things and I'm an eyeballer. So this at least gives me a little bit more, you know, accuracy doing it this way. And I thought it was super cool. So 
I'm gonna remove my transfer tape and then I'm just gonna go into painting all my little areas. So I wanna put this base paint down behind it so your glitter has more coverage than just putting it on the white. So this is just a yellow, a green, and a pink acrylic paint I used. Um, I'll get you guys the exact colors. I'll list them in the description box below, but they're all just random, you know, acrylic paints that I've bought over the time. I just wanted them to, I kind of wanted them to match the glitter colors that I was gonna use. So whatever you decide your glitter colors are, just try to find your base paint to do that. And you definitely could go in and mix your acrylic paint in with your Mod Podge. I just, for, for this purpose, I just decided to go ahead and paint the actual squares first to kind of give myself a guide as I was going through as well. And then I want to reiterate to y'all, and the only reason I say this is because I have learned this the hard way. The first cup that I did like this, I did not print off my top layer of my decal, and I probably had to print off 10 to get it resized because I was not going back to redo that cup. So I had to just inch, inch, you know, like just millimeter by millimeter size the thing so it actually did fit. So I would say again, as you're printing off your white decal here that you're using as your guide, please go ahead and print off at the same time while you've got it in your design space or whatever it is you use, print off your top one and whatever vinyl you're gonna use for it as well. And I'm just gonna go through the painting real quick just so you guys can kind of see the guide that I'm using. And these paints are, the, the pink is a Mondo Llama. Um, I think I ordered it on Amazon, and it's Tropical Hibiscus is the color. And then the yellow I used was an Apple Barrel Pale Daffodil. I'm sure I got it at Walmart. Um, and then Folk Art Green Neon. I actually used a lighter green, and it wasn't giving me enough coverage, so I went back in with this neon green that gave me a little extra coverage. And then I'm also going to use a gold for part of it, and just to bring out a little bit of the leaves. And then I go back in and add some little details here too. And this is just an uh, apple barrel pure gold is what it's called. And then after I get these painted and I let it dry, I let it dry for about 30 minutes, y'all. I'm going to go in with Peachy Olive Glitter's Clear Adhesive. You really can use anything, a Mod Podge that you use. I'm not a fan of Mod Podge, so I like Peachy Olive's Clear Adhesive that they have. Um, I've tried to stash it up as much as I can because I really liked it. And you can see here I'm taping off my cup. I'm not going to, it's not really going to get in the way, but I'm just trying to prevent any glitter from getting on that vinyl right now while I'm going to glitter this. And then I'm going to go back in with a little bit of epoxy on my finger. After my other colored glitter, I'm going to go in and glitter it white. So I just decided to go ahead and tape it off now just so that part of it's done. And once then I get the pineapple glittered, I'm not kind of fighting around with getting that tape on there. And I'm going to go with my glitters now. You can see I actually used one glitter and it just didn't have really good coverage. So I'm going back and just kind of painting it over it. I mean, sometimes it's just a trial and error process of what's going to show up, y'all. So, and it's been a long time since I originally did this cup and I honestly didn't remember exactly what colors I used. And I've got so many new glitters since I did this cup. So I thought, well, let me just kind of go with what I think works. So y'all, I don't always get it right the first time. Sometimes I have to go back and try again. Y'all you know, just don't see all the mess ups. But I, try, I thought I'm going to leave this one in here because you can go back and paint over it if you didn't get good enough coverage the first time and I'm actually going to use peachy olive glitters paradise and I actually still do not like the coverage that I got it was good but I kept going back and forth to the color on the cup versus the color on the vinyl and that was kind of my main thing that I wanted all that to be really cohesive in the colors so you can see I use this paradise right here and I really like the way that it looks it just still wasn't a quite a deep enough color that I wanted. I knew once I got the gold on top of it, I wanted something a little bit sharper to pop. And I'm actually not gonna add any more uh, adhesive here. I'm just gonna go in with this and kind of fill in. This is Prickly Pear by Peachy Olive Glitter. And it's a little bit finer, it's a square cut. So it has just a little bit, I knew it would pick up without, um, you know, I didn't need to add any more adhesive. It kind of just fall in the cracks. So then I'm going to go back in and I'm just going to, I move from darkest to lightest. It's kind of how I do just so I don't, I'm not adding darker colors on top of the other lighter colors glittered. So, um, I start with kind of what I think is the darkest, get that glitter on there first and then kind of move into my lighter colors. So I'm just going to let you guys watch this. I'm going to go through the pink and then I'm going to go through the, and I actually use uh, Southern Belle glitters pink flamingos and then the gold i'm going to use is peachy olive glitters athena and then i'm going to go into peachy olive glitters duckling for the yellow so i'm just going to kind of let you guys watch this there's no <laughs> real secret to it i'm just kind of coloring in the squares and 
I do go outside a little bit of the squares because you'll find when you go to lay your top vinyl decal, the template down, you may have areas that don't get covered really well. So it's really not a bad thing if you get a little bit outside of the little circle, I mean, the little, the little areas, because just trust me, <laughs> it's better to be outside than to not have full coverage on the little areas. And once I get all this glittered, I do let it sit just for about 30, 45 minutes. I mean, however long. Y'all know I usually let mine sit. And I'm gonna take a brush and I'm just gonna brush off any excess. So I just, if, I wanna see if there's areas that I need to go back in and add up a little more adhesive and glitter. And then I just wanna get as much as I can off because I'm gonna go in with Mod Podge's Clear Acrylic Sealer and I'm gonna spray a couple of coats on this. So once it's dry and I brushed off the excess, I do go in with the Mod Podge, I spray one coat. I let that dry for about 30 minutes and then I did a second coat. I know a lot of people use a lot of different things. That's the thing that I have the best luck with is that Mod Podge Clear Acrylic Sealer as far as getting glitter not to move on me. So you can see this is what it is. It's the gloss. I don't think that really matters, but um, that's what I use. I did two coats of that, and then I let that dry. And then I've mixed up a little bit of Countercultures Medium Viscosity Artist Resin here. And I know that there's, you definitely could probably go in and glitter the base white before. You could even do like a cheat glitter. You could add an additive into the epoxy that would make it sparkly and then do your pineapple on top of it. Just because of the way the little areas that you're glittering in the different colors of the pineapple works, I felt like it would sit up too much and it would take too much epoxy to cover up if I didn't do the white layer kind of at the same level, if that makes sense, as I did the other colors. So I was trying to kind of spare epoxy on the back end. And so I've just taken my little silicone tool and I've kind of gone down in all those little crevices. And then just to smooth it out, I just take my glove right there and I'm just stuck my finger through it. And I'm just like kind of smoothing out all those areas because it is white and white does have a tendency to streak. So I'm just trying to smooth that out a little bit before I'm gonna go in and glitter it with my white glitter. And this is Firefly from PDB Creative Studio. I know that this is probably sold out. <laughs> it's sold out a lot of times. Y'all, somebody in my Facebook group told me about this color and I have been sleeping on it. And so finally I was like, okay, I gotta get this color. I gotta see what all this hype is about because they keep talking about it. Y'all sign up for their email alerts and get this color. It is totally worth it. When I first used it, I was like, okay, they are not my group members. They'll tell me the truth. And they were like, you gotta get that color. So I'm so glad I did. And when you sign up for their email alerts, they uh, will notify you when things come back in stock. So I'd say this one's definitely one that's wor worth it. But you really could go with any white that you guys want. So I wanted to choose something that had a little bit of holographic gold to it, if that makes sense, like that had that gold shift versus some of the other, you know, options. Uh, so I kind of just tried to find what I thought would go along with the gold. And then, you know, just bring out the best colors in my vinyl decal that I was going to use on top and the, and the glitters that were already there. So... Okay, y'all, so I let that dry about eight hours, and then I'm gonna go in with a layer of Countercultures Quick Coat. So this is a urethane sealer. You can use polyacrylic. I prefer Quick Coat. I just feel like it doesn't give me, sometimes I feel like polyacrylic can sometimes give you a foggy finish. I don't know so much notice it as, at, at, after I put my epoxy on it, but for some reason, I just like Quick Coat better, y'all. So if you followed me for any length of time, you know, that's kind of my, just, just my choice, but you can definitely use lots of different things. Um, and I did had not sprayed this again because basically the colors have already been sprayed and they're not gonna move anyway. But you can kind of see as I'm putting this polyacrylic on, I do try to go into the white area first and then I'm gonna just kind of brush over my darker colors in the pineapple. And then I'm gonna, my tape, I want my tape laid down there because I don't want the glitter to get on my vinyl, basically. And then I kind of pull the tape up, if this makes sense, from the bottom up. So you kind of create like a little ridge. So if the polyacrylic runs off of where you've got your glitter, it'll just stay on that, on that tape. It won't actually get on your vinyl. So this is just kind of a little tip that I've learned, a little tip of the trade here. <laughs> um, because if you don't pull that tape up, kind of like that, where it creates like a little, almost a little barrier, I have had a tendency if I get too much polyacrylic on there, it'll kind of run down the tape and it'll get onto your vinyl. So I kind of do that on both sides. It doesn't take very much, y'all. I just wanted to make sure that I had a good solid coat of this polyacrylic. And then I let this coat dry. I'll usually, y'all know, I'm usually like working on something else. So it probably can dry like an hour and then I'm ready to go into my next layer of epoxy.
So now I've moved it to my turner and I've removed the tape here and I am using Countercultures Medium Viscosity Artist Resin. I'm gonna go in with about 20 milliliters of Countercultures here. And I do, I wanna go with a thinner coat um, obviously, it's going to take a few coats more than normal, probably, because you do have this pineapple that's kind of this, it's got a little bit of adhesive underneath there, you know, to make it stick, so it makes it a little bit raised. So, I'm actually going to add this a coat, and you want it very smooth before you want to get, before you go in to add your decal. Trust me, I've done this, enough times. I've pulled off this vinyl so many times in the past to make sure it was really smooth. So, I am going to apply this coat, I uh, use about 20 milliliters, like I said, on a 20 ounce skinny straight. And then I'm gonna go, I'm gonna let that dry for about four to six hours. And then I'm gonna go into a second coat. And then I'm gonna kind of sand around my rim after I've let it dry about eight hours. And I am gonna go into a third coat, y'all. So, but take into account too, I'm using thinner coats than a lot of people probably normally use. I just would rather have a little bit at a time here to kind of build up that coverage over the pineapple. So that's kind of how I do it. And I don't want any, you know, I don't want any bulges at the top or the bottom. So I really want it to lay flat. And so that's just kind of how I do this one. And if there's areas that need to be sanded down after the second coat, you can kind of go down and just knock those down a little bit, but I didn't want to take too much of the glitter off here that's in the pineapple. So that's just kind of how I do it y'all. <laughs> And then after I've let this coat dry, y'all, I let it dry for a good probably eight hours because I'm going to go with my vinyl decal. It's still not cured well. Um, you know, it's cured. It's a touch. But I still, I knew that the vinyl was going to stick really well to it. Um, and then I sanded down any areas that seemed like they might still be sticking up and a little bit of sharp. You can see I've kind of uh, sanded it down a little bit here. And y'all, I don't really have a perfect way to lay this day on it very carefully is all I know to say. And thank goodness I'd cut this one out on the front end when I laid, when I printed out my guide that I laid on the cup. Um, I would say I've done this more times than I probably care to admit as many of these cups as I've done where I've pulled up the vinyl because I just didn't have it lined up right. So I wish that I had some perfect trick. Um, I wish that my little Fisker's alignment tool would work, but this time I just kind of like had to eyeball it and try to make sure it was lined up as well as I could with the no white areas showing. So this is the Spectrum, I think it's Starcraft Spectrum Gold. I'll link it in the description box below. But that's what I've used as uh, my, you know, top decal there. And then I've also had these strips. And y'all, I would encourage y'all, like you can see my little... Uh, sheet of vinyl over on the side. I go in and cut out strips. I just take a square. I size it out to the width and length that I want it. But then I also save those sheets afterwards and the little areas that are in between where you've actually cut work great for things like this too. They actually are sized almost the exact size that I usually want them as far as how it spaces it out in Design Center when it's cutting it. So, um, I would say like I try to use every bit of that bottle sheet that I can. So then I'm just going to trim off the top and the bottom. I just kind of run my craft knife and just kind of press it down instead of trying to cut it because if you try to cut it, sometimes it's going to pull off. And then when you go in to put your epoxy, you're going to think that that little piece is stuck on there, but it's really not. And then also, I apologize, I did not uh, record putting the circle on the bottom but I do just usually, I kind of now have a standard template as far as what size I use on the eight, the 20 ounce skinny straight. I think it's 2.75. So I just take a circle. I put it in, I open it up in design space and then I size it out at 2.75 and I just cut it out in that same pineapple vinyl that's on the back, that beach please 10. And then that's what I place on the bottom. Um, so I apologize. I didn't record that for y'all. I will reference some other vinyl tutorials where you guys can see me do that as well. And a lot of times I will go in and put a layer of quick coat here before I go into my layer of epoxy but I felt like this vinyl was stuck on there pretty good but any kind of holographic or metallic vinyl that you guys use if your cups cured for pretty much any length of time honestly for whatever reason I felt pretty secure this wasn't going to lift and thank goodness it didn't but I will go in usually and add a layer of countercultures quick coat even if it's just over the top and the bottom of those little seams when you run those seams down there they always want to pull off at the top and the bottom sometimes so I would say um any kind of sealer, really. I'm sure you could use polyacrylic. I just prefer, again, a quick coat. And a lot of times, I'll just kind of run my finger down that little strip just to make sure it doesn't lift off. So, I am going to do this layer of epoxy. And just because that pineapple is still a little raised, I do let this coat dry for about four to six hours. And then I'm going to go in with another layer of countercultures medium viscosity. And I use about 25 milliliters there as well. And then I'll have my final design. So I hope that you guys enjoy it. It's a tutorial that people have been asking for. And it's a cup I did a long time ago. And I felt sure nobody wanted a tutorial on that. But it kept getting asked for. So I wanted to make sure that I got it out to you guys. And so I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you like this final design. And 
Y'all, please join my Facebook group because that's where I, that's where you guys connect with me and tell me what it is you want to see. What tutorials do you want to see? And I'm even just getting emotional thinking about it. So y'all come over there and join us at Facebook. I have, I'm having so much fun. We go live on Sunday nights and Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. And now we're having fun full Fridays at 3 p.m. So y'all make sure to join me. Please like, share, subscribe, all that fun, crazy stuff so you don't miss my future tutorials. Thank y'all so much for watching and I'll see you again soon.